and I'll give you a go once it's going. Okay, or you're in. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a wee bit of alchemy. Um, first thing, I'd like to give a, a big thank you to all who have contributed to the cause through PayPal and Venmo. And if you need uh, instructions about how to do that, uh, just go to the website and and you can get the uh, you can get the information there or check the newsletter. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for for any support that you can you can give for this. Appreciate it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tonight I'd like to to discuss a few things, but. Uh, I'd like to primarily address uh, something we've talked about a bit before, but go back to, and that is creating energy through poles in opposition. So that'll be kind of the central theme, and then we'll do some exercises around that, and plus anything else that pops up. So the uh, the idea of poles in opposition, and um, Joyce had a question about the. Part of the uh, qigong where we disappear the qi. So at the uh, and this might be the most important part. After you create, you crank up lots and lots of qi. Then you take a deep breath. You step in, go to a, a neutral posture, take a deep breath, and then you press down as you exhale. And as you're doing this, imagine you're pushing down on a plunger and you're getting rid of the chi. You're throwing it away. And as you're kind of pushing it down, you can imagine you're shoving it down through your feet back into the earth. And uh, the key here to that is that you don't want to hang on to the chi. And this is a this is a big deal. If you uh, many people advise you to store the chi in your dantian, and you you build it up, you pack it into your bones, or there's a number of, of ways of thinking of this. What I prefer to think of is to disappear the chi, so that you are then actually creating a void to allow nature chi to come in. And it, it, there are two different ways of thinking about, about the, the chi gang stuff. You think of yourself as a closed system, that is you are, the energy is, is packed inside of you and you're just sort of generating it within your, own, within your own skin and you're storing it up then, oh, okay, I got, I got more chi and I can hang on to this. But for me, we're an open system. That is we are plugged into the big chi that we, our bodies are energy conduits rather than, than storage facilities, and that we can no more hang on to energy than we can to our breath. We breathe in, we breathe out. We, when we breathe in, the breath circulates to the cells via the circulatory system and feeds that, and then waste products are then expelled through the, uh, by the lungs, and we have this a constant in and out kind of thing. We don't hang on to breath. We can hang on to it for, for a minute, but then it's time to go. And energy is the, same, is the same thing as far as I'm concerned. That is, you don't want to hang on to energy because energy is really just, it, 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 it comes, it goes. It is a statement of relationship between two things. The tension between two things, that's energy. And to hold on to it, you can't. It's a, it's not a. You are you create the energy in present time, and you by plugging into the big chi through central equilibrium. You are then a conduit which allows the the larger energy of the universe to pass through you, and that is virtually infinite. And so you're capacity to circulate chi is a much higher uh, value to use than it is to uh, 
to just hold on to chi. So, and, and dumping this out at the end. So we'll, we'll crank up the chi pretty good tonight. And you'll get the feeling like, oh, okay, this is a lot. And you want to be able to throw it away to bring your body mind back into some homeostasis to a condition where if it doesn't feel threatened by having way too much energy going through, through it. And you gradually build up your tolerance for energy. You gradually create more vitality. And we do it by, first of all, plugging into the big G. We make it coherent and, and within the system. And we unkink the hose so that we're allowed the energy to circulate freely throughout the whole system. And those are basically the three ideas that, that I focus on with, the, uh, with energy cultivation. And an important part of that is disposing of the chi at the end so that you're saying, okay, good. So now I can return to homeostasis, but different. That energy I've, I've opened up to the big chi and it's moving through me and, and I'm taking along for a ride. What? <laughs> I just got a thumbs up from my producer. So uh, uh, any questions on this? Is that, does that explanation uh, sound uh, reasonable to anyone? <laughs> Sounds good, 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 good. Any, uh, any questions on that? Okay, so yeah, so don't hang on to your chi. There's an infinite supply out there. The big, big thing is be able to plug in instantly to the big chi and be able to just tolerate, learn to tolerate more and more energy flow through you. So, uh, so I have a question. Uh, um, so if you can, uh, if you can't store the energy, can you can you deplete your energy then? Can you what? Deplete, deplete. Deplete your energy. Yes, you can. You can. I mean, how does that, that that balance work? You know, like how uh, do you have like just the right amount versus too much and not enough? Well, consider that every form in the, in, the, in the manifest universe is leaking energy. It, uh, that is entropy. It, it, energy in any form will tend to dissipate over time. And that is, that is, that is the way, that is the impermanence of, of, of all form. It thinks, you know, the idea is you, um, of entropy, if you, you stick a knife into a into a flame. Let's say just the tip of the of the uh, the knife into a into a, a fire, and that the tip will heat up. And take the knife away, and then slowly the the whole that that energy will dissipate throughout the whole knife, so that it it will gradually disperse. And then it'll go and it'll disperse into the air, and it'll everything will return back to its set point. It's 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 uh, there's a certain normalcy there, and the same thing is true for your body. That if you don't do something, if in, if your consciousness is not organizing it in a way which actually enhances energy, it will move toward entropy. So the, uh, in scientific terms, you can talk about the coherence is inversely proportional to ent entropy. That is, whenever a system, like say your body-mind, is highly organized and functioning very smoothly, then the amount of entropy in that system the amount that it's kind of moving toward energy leakage is diminished. Whenever you move toward non-coherence, then you get more leakage, you get more entropy. So uh, if you are not bringing your awareness to actually create more coherence and more energy in your system, you will move toward leakage. We don't notice it when we're younger because we have boundless renewable resources. But as we get older, we start to, to, oh, hey, wait a minute, the knife is no longer in the flame now and it's 
it's dispersing the heat throughout the whole, throughout the universe. And we start to move back toward just toward no form, toward nothing. But it, if you want to hang on to your form, i.e. your body mind, for a while, it's a real swell idea to organize it in a highly coherent fashion and, and generate and plug into the big cheese so that you're slowing that process down as much as possible. That you're actually create what's called neg entropy or syntropy, which is to actually enhance your ability to uh, handle lot, handle more energy. And that's kind of what we do in Tai Chi and Qigong is we do that. And we, we lose energy, uh, we leak it uh, through kinks in the hose. Whenever we are blocking our chi, then there is, it doesn't get through, it doesn't circulate well, and so certain parts of your body mind get starved for, for energy. And then you develop all kinds of strategies to compensate for the fact that you're leaking energy everywhere. So um, you want to uh, you want to be able to unkink the hose, get the get as coherent as possible, and plug into the big chi, and that way you get this renewable resource. So, any other questions? That, that was great. I appreciate appreciate the op opportunity to talk about. It. Did that make sense? What I just said. Is that good? All good? Good. Great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Close it up as it. All right, so moving on. So creating energy. So this actually was a great segue into what we're talking about here, which is creating energy. And uh, we, we have to get, get past the, the laws of thermodynamics, which say that matter, can either, matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but merely change from one form to another. And um, that's a scientific view of it, and it's absolutely applicable within the, the, within the language of thermodynamics, and, and I have no argument with that. Once we enter life and consciousness into the equation, new ballgame, because that's where we create neg entropy. And, you know, Arthur Eddington, um, uh, a, uh, who was one of Einstein's good buddies, he, uh, he said that you can't define energy without defining mass or matter, and you can't define matter without defining energy. And that's because the two are, are the yin and yang of the system. You know, whenever someone says, oh, everything is energy, it's like, yeah, you can think about it that way, but what is it? It's a meaningless statement if you have nothing there, no form there for, for the energy to, to do anything with. So you, uh, if you think of energy as the tension between two things, whatever they may be, and that tension is created by your mind, you create energy at that point. You actually pull it out of nothing. It uh, you so we're going to do some uh, some some exercises here in a bit to uh, to actually feel that to be able to create that energy. But that's the that's the core part of it there. So when you hold it, when consciousness holds the two poles in opposition, then we get we get this tension, and that tension creates a flow. It creates a, a relationship between those two things, only because I'm holding that in my mind. We take that away, and, and if we're not thinking about energy, we just have what is. It's, you know, there's matter, there's energy. In, in, in the state of unity, in the state of wholeness, in the state of oneness, there is no matter and energy. It's only whenever you start to think about it and you start to divide it into its pieces so that you can do cool stuff with it, that's when the uh, that's when that distinction gets made. So we make the distinction by 
holding these poles in opposition. So let's uh, let's play around with that a little bit. Um, I'd like to do it first by um, let's let's just start with stand up, please, and let's do uh, one of the the foundation exercises that we played with a, a few weeks ago. So first, feel the balls of your feet. You want to feel that and allow your weight to settle over the balls of your feet. So most of us are, are, are put our weight in our heels and this requires a certain adjustment and the balls of the feet are on, along the big toe line. So you want to get that. Bring your elbows out to the side a little bit. Point your index fingers and feel that. Reach with the crown point of your head, your knee one. Tuck in your chin and open up the jade pillow gate, this point right here at the base of the skull. So just notice that just by doing that, something happens. You start to feel tingling, pulsing, maybe some heat, a sense of fullness. And that happens virtually instantly. This is because we're plugging into the big chi. So just take a moment and just feel into that. So we have chi as our energy as a renewable resource right now. We're plugging into that by feeling your balls of your feet and simultaneously feeling the top of your head, the knee one point, the crown of your head, you are creating poles in opposition. The balls of your feet open the gate, the energy gate to the earth chi, the yin chi of the earth. Reaching with the crown of your head opens up the yang chi, opens up to the yang chi of the heavens. So the Yang Chi goes down through your body and out through your feet. The Yin Chi of the earth comes up through your feet and out through the top of your head. So we just, we become like a big magnet, like a bar magnet for the North and South Pole. So just bring your, your arms out in front, set your elbows and Bring your hands up, palms facing up toward you. Your arms to about a 45 degree angle, the forearms. And without moving your elbows, just rotate your forearms. Reach with your thumbs as you, as you turn in. Reach with your little fingers with your, as you turn out. And again. And just feel that motion intentionally reaching with the thumb, intentionally reaching with the little fingers. Breathe. Relax your shoulders. Good. And just hold that posture there. And just feel into your hands. Now rotate your palms so they face each other. Reach out with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. And feel the opposition between the two hands. Feel the hands 
in relation to each other. Push, the get, push them together without moving, using no muscular force, but just have the intention there of pushing them together and just notice what, what that does to you. Notice the effect. Now pull them apart without moving. Get the intention to pull them apart and feel what effect that has. Now push them together and feel that. Just move your hand just a little bit and notice the palpable bubble there that exists between your hands. You're creating a field between the hands by holding those two poles in opposition. Bring your hands down. Elbows out, round arms are rounded. And just feel the, the sensations in your hands and your fingers. Feel it through your whole body. Just that little bit there, just a minute of doing that. And we created a lot of effect. The expression in, in, in Taiji is that the E or the mind leads the chi and the chi leads the blood. So the enhanced circulation that you're feeling comes from the fact that your chi is leading the blood. And that's because you're bringing your awareness in, you're creating that flow, that you're creating that chi by holding those poles in opposition. So now bring your hands up and feel that field again. Bring it, summon it up, because it, it, it exists there, right? It's a, it, in your memory, and it's something that you can easily recreate. Recre recreating very quickly an energy field, because we got familiar with that field. Reach out with those elbows and just make sure that we don't kink the hose there. Reach up with the knee one, feel the balls of your feet. Keep the, uh, keep the big chi coming through. And bring the hands down again. Now feel your left hand, feel your right hand. And notice that just by bringing your mind there, you are creating poles in opposition. So let's take this a little farther. Let's do a little e-tran. And we're going to use that idea of poles in opposition and expand upon it. And before we do that, does anybody have any questions about, uh, about this? I just want to make sure where everybody's on the, on the same page here. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay, great. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna we're gonna create some more chi now. So we're plugged into this big, virtually infinite source, and as long as you keep that plugged in, you're 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 a conduit in that. So 
Bring your, bring your hands up. Reach with your wrists. Elbows are reached out. And as you, your hands come up, feel your body sinking into the earth. So the hands are coming up, the body is going down. Round your arms. Reach out with your elbows. Lift with your hands without moving and sink with your body without moving. So just get the intention there of raising your arms raising your hands and sinking. So the, the body's going down, the hands are going up. Reach with those elbows, keep the shoulder joints open. Notice that having them high like this is different. Drop your elbows down to here and notice this is much more relaxed but it's not producing the same degree of energy as we get if we're up here. Now press down with your hands and go up with your body. And this is something, if you can't stand up, feel free to sit down and you can do this while sitting. So you're, everything's going up except for your arms. They're pressing down. Now imagine your arms reaching out, pressing out, expanding, opening up, and your body pulling back. Bring your arms in without moving them and your body goes forward to meet them. Feel those poles in opposition. Rotate your palms and press down as your body comes up. Bring your hands down, elbows out, reach with your knee wand, feel the balls of your feet. Open the jade pillow gate. And feel the energy that is cascading through your body. Like a torrent. Rotate out on your left, pivot on your left heel, step out and bring your right foot in, reach out with that and bring your arms up, reaching to the right. Again, reaching with the elbows, opening the shoulder joints, reaching with the fingers. As you reach out, pull back with your body. Feel that. Now pull in with your hands and forward with your body. Lift with your hands and sink with your body. So just by applying your attention and intention to this, you are creating fields. You're creating energy flow. 
Press down with your hands and up with your body. So this is not a static condition here. This is a, a dynamic uh, fluid relationship that you are able to control and change any moment. Now, sink into your right turn and turn to the left. Again, feel the ball of your foot. Reach with the knee one. Open the, reach with the elbows. Open the jade pillow gate. Open the claw. Reach out. Pull back with the body. Feel that. Feel your tissues lengthening as you do that. Pull back with your hands, forward with the body. Reach up with the hands, down with the body. Press down with the hands and up with the body. And bring your hands down and step back. 50-50, neutral posture. Feel into your hands. Feel the energy circulating throughout the whole system. So what we're doing here is we're plugging into the big chi and directing that energy and opening up the system so that it allows it to sneak into every nook and cranny to feed each cell in your body, restoring that vitality. And with it comes your circulation, all the different, not just the circulation of the blood, but all the fluids. They get to circulate through and you're enhancing the chi flow in, into the marrow of your bones as well. And that produces vibrant new blood cells and lymphocytes which enhance your immune system. And then we step in. Take a deep breath, hands come up. And press down. And get rid of the chi, throw it all away. When you know you can create it at will, you're less inclined to cling to old stagnant chi. You're allowing that to circulate through and that cleans out the whole system. And you may say, yeah, but I'm feeling a lot of energy right now. Where's that coming from? And that's that's the nature chi. That's the big chi coming through you. You're just a conduit right now. And allowing it to do its work. So in this state, it, you don't have to direct it. The, uh, it has its own intelligence 
and it will do what it needs to do to fix, to correct imbalances, to go where it needs to go. Okay, take a seat. Rick. You're on mute. I know. That's what I was looking for. At the very uh, end there, as I yes. was bringing it to move it out, when I suddenly started to cough, it felt like post-nasal drip going into my throat. Is that moving of the liquid that we were talking about, or is it something completely different? Um, well, it could be uh, the, uh, the dew from heaven. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it, that that's what it is, but whenever you energize to a certain degree, then the saliva gets produced in abundance, and it's a very rich, and and it's something that is you swallow that to, and it it enhances your whole system. So uh, I would say that uh, I, I, I'm going to call it that <laughs> just because that's of all the possible <laughs> interpretations. That's the, that's the most fun of all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all about the fun here. So, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, well, there, yeah. There was I, a I, lot hey, of energy. Do, do from heaven. Good. So, good so, yay. <laughs> and that just, you know, more vitality. Cool. Anybody else? Valerie. Valerie. Um, just in reference to what Rick experienced, um, I was a part of uh, another train of thought with energy and coughing and sneezing. You know, when you've been working with energy, was also viewed as a way of releasing um, energy that you just want to let go of. So it could be that. Uh, juice that's produced, or it could just be letting go of energy that you're ready to let go of. I mean, you know, it's just a different way of looking at it. Maybe. Could be. Either but one's good. I also have a question. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, talk, talk, please, about the Dantian. And because there's, uh, you know, for the majority of my years studying Tai Chi, you know, the Dan Tian was just everything. I won't say majority of years, but for a lot of years, the Dan Tian was the golden yes. egg. Yes. And um, I, other than being like where you, it directs where you go, you know, that's like, Okay, you turn the dantian this way, the whole body turns that way. You turn, you know, blah, blah, blah. So speak to, would you please, how you view the dantian and its role in all the stuff that we do, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, I, would, I would love to. That, that, that's a great, great question. A lot of my thinking is influenced by uh, uh, Master Yang Fu Kui and, and his... Uh, his views on, on, on the Dantian, and uh, uh, I too was uh, informed by a lot of the uh, ideas that, that you're talking about there. As I was going, it's like, okay, well, you seek the chi to the Dantian, and then you you extend from that. And uh, I uh, I tried it, and it didn't work for me that way. And um, it's a different different thing. The Dantian is really important because, just to be clear, um, some people think it's the chi high point right here, like, you know, uh, uh, 
a couple of fingers below the navel, uh, about a third of the way in, there's a, a one little tiny point there that a lot of people say, oh, that's, that's your Don Tien. Master Young had a different uh, view that he got from his grandfather and his great uncle. And uh, I, I, I much prefer that. And that is, it's this whole area here. The whole area below in your lower pelvis is your Don Tien. And that it is where the water chi is, is developed, your kidney chi is, is developed. And um, he talked about his, his great uncle told him, sink your dantian to your knees. So the, you, you actually feel the dantian and you feel it down so that you're, uh, you're bringing everything down, the energy down there. So this becomes like, it's, it's, a, it's a crucial part of, of your, your body mind is a crucial part of the energy system. But it's, if you think about it, you get, actually get weaker. You feel it and it's, you know, you, you feel it, you feel it expand, contract, you feel the, you feel the diaphragm pushing down, feel the pressure down there, all that's great. But uh, that's it. You don't, you, it, it, you, you as, as in your practice, in your, in your Qigong or whatever, it's great to feel it, but it's not the source. It is part of the system. So at least in the way way I think of it, and it's really it's a crucial part, but it's 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 still just part of the system. And whenever you move into a state of coherence or wholeness, then that gets you get plugged into that also. So um, I'm not I may have gotten off track here. So can I, you repeat your your question I, I about that, that answer it, or is there something more to that? Um, what is, what does Dangerous Andy have to say? I think he, he's got something he's burning to, to say. Oh, good. Don't even. Hey, Rabbi. <laughs> I have a, I told you this a long time ago, Rick. I had a funny experience with Master Yang, um, uh, about Don Tien, where at one point I was, Valerie, I was saying exactly like, like from the Don Tien, and he got all excited and started hitting me all over my body, like on my shoulder. He goes, here's Don Tien. Here's Dantian, down on my knee. This is Dantian. He's like, there is no Dantian. Like, he, 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 he just tapped me all over my body saying, this is Dantian. This is Dantian. No, 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 I never heard that story. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I told you that. Right. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like that. <laughs> I don't remember what we were practicing, but I, you know, I asked some question. It's always a mistake to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie. Um, well, that just verifies what I've felt and known for years and years and years that, you know, I, because like you, you know, I'm trying to, to feel this, like I said, the golden egg kind of thing, you know, okay, this is supposed to be the seed of everything. And I just never got it. It's like, I, I you know, moving the, the pelvic girdle takes, you know, the hips and the shoulders and, and all of that. But as far as all of this turning and, you know, convoluting, it's like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on the feet. Let's focus on the feet. <laughs> you know, it just made more sense to me. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yes. You answered just what I wanted to hear. Thank you. I remember early in my, uh, my, uh, my path, you know, decades ago, I was, really wrestling with the Dantian idea. And I was uh, talking to a Qigong master and uh, here in Staten Island, actually. And he, uh, uh, I said, okay, I keep looking for the Dantian, I can't find it. You know, what, where is it? And, and he just kind of smiled and said, he's like, 
Oh, you're, you're like someone standing on the beach looking for the ocean and can't find it. And, you know, it's one of those cryptic kind of fortune cookie kind of things that like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not, it's not a thing, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, a, a basically it's a statement of relationships. And uh, so in very, uh, useful terms, if you feel your lower abdomen and you breathe in such a way that you're feeling the, the pressure of your diaphragm pushing down so that you are massaging your internal organs and you're bringing your breath down so that you actually feel into your hui yin, the uh, at the perineum, that point there, then you're going to get connected up. It's, a, it's, a, it's one path in that allows you to connect up, which is very valuable. But it, uh, if you think about your Dantian, you're probably missing the joke because it's part of the system. Does that make sense? So, so the idea of having like a golden egg in there that it's going to all when I get, once I get to there the magic happens then I don't think that is that is the case. I've never seen anybody who could demonstrate that or do anything with that. So I'm I'm going to let that one kind of that's sort of out there and let that go. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Um, uh, da, da, da. How'd that feel that uh, that holding poles in opposition thing? Any questions on that? Because that's uh, that that to me that's that's fundamental. When when you have that as a, uh, uh, you can apply that to anything. So let's just say you're sitting here right now, and um, just put your hands on your knees. And feel your your left knee with your left hand. Now feel your right knee with your right hand. You can give it a squeeze if you like. Now feel your left knee with your left hand. And feel your right knee with your right hand. Now feel them both at the same time. And just notice your state of awareness right now. Now imagine you're pushing those two hands together and two knees together. Now pulling them apart. And notice how quickly you're able to generate not just energy, but also a change of state. Your awareness very quickly becomes, uh, it, it shifts into a super conscious state, a state of body, mind, spirit integration very quickly and very uh, predictably. It's something that you can control. So your, so an internal process is where are those things that we can do or think that we can control, we can actually direct that bring about a change of state. And so it, it, it's, it's really that simple whenever you, you know, when you break it down. I mean, at least the energy production part. You have something you want to offer? I had a question. <laughs> Please. When, uh, I know that we can't do this in a class, but when you're doing like push hands or, or just uh, interaction between two people, right? Yep. 
Is it the two people each are poles that are in opposition? Or is it I put two poles in opposition in dealing with you? Or, you know, how does poles in opposition go when you're working with another person? Great, great question. So poles in opposition with another person. So she, Maria's talking about uh, in push hands. Where does that apply there? So we have two different systems. We have, or actually three. So let's say I'm, I'm pushing with Maria, then there is my system where I want to get coherent and plug the leaks and be able to generate energy within my system. Then there's Maria's system, which she's trying to do the same thing. And then there is the shared system. So I am generating a certain amount of energy. And when we do that, just... Let me stand up here and just kind of give a visual to that. Ooh. So we'll just do a, a static kind of kind of holding here, right? So we just put, bring your hand on my elbow there. Good. So here we have, I try to seek a certain level of coherence and, and allow my energy to fill up. Maria does the same. And to the extent that we are separate in our own minds and I am objectifying her and saying, oh, okay, I'm trying to do this thing to, to Maria, to that degree that I, I actually inhibit my power. I, I become weaker by objectifying her. And she's able to, to change my situation. <laughs> so, but if I meet Maria, and first as moving from my state of wholeness and into a meeting, then I'm able to handle that energy that she's got because she's doing the exact same thing to me. So we have a system here where there is, we are feeding each other. We're creating a synergy that creates an even bigger and bigger energy that we're able to contain within the system, within the form. So we're generating more and more chi and learning to tolerate that more and more chi as we do that. <laughs> and so that's, that's the fun of push hands. It's not, oh, can I knock someone down? As, no, it's, uh, can we engage in this in this system that allows both of us to crank up our chi to an, a, a, a higher level and be able to, not just our chi, but also our state of being. So that we're actually able to enhance our, our awareness and expand to a much bigger, uh, a, a bigger game. Anybody else? Sharon. Um, I want to go back to our previous exercise. Okay. Um, I notice that what's been occurring for myself is that when I'm trying to focus on something on say the left or right side of my body, I'm breathing only through the nostril on that side. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you feel your left hand and you're only breathing through the left nostril? Yes. Yeah. Um, is that wow. something I should try to balance? And I don't, I mean, you know. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure that if you could, and then it would be a fun thing to do. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything wrong with that because both your left nostril and the and your left hand are controlled by the right side of your brain. So it 
makes perfect sense to, to do that. But if, if as an exercise, you want to control, you, you want to get into a whole brain coherence and a, a hemispheric synchronization, then you could feel your left knee with your left hand and breathe through your right nostril. And you could just do it like that, do it manually until you, until you get, the, get the hang of it. And what that would do would it would create a hemispheric synchronization, which would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> thank you. But, so, wait, that, wait. That's, a, that's a great idea. <laughs> does does that mean this is uh, totally foreign to me? Does that mean that other people can choose which nostril to breathe out of without using their finger to stop one or the other? I can. I can. You can. Anyone, okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Sharon and Rick can Nora do it. Can. Joyce. Nora, Nora can. can do it. Nora, Joyce. Oh, Joyce, Joyce can. Yeah. Wow. Joyce can. Andrew. Andrew can. So it's it's something you just practice. I remember there was a time whenever I would have one nostril or the other just completely jammed up. You know, this was decades ago. And like, oh, okay. And so I consciously worked to breathe through one nostril or the other so that I could control that just because I didn't like the idea of having one nostril, you know, jammed up, you know, I'm sure there was a logical reason for, for, for why it was obstructed, but I didn't have time for that. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to work right. So then I, you know, I just practice it. Nora, you had something? Well, there is a energy um, association with the left and the right nostril. So the left uh, nostril associated right with the right brain, I think I'm, I don't think I'm thinking of it right, and then vice versa. So that, like in yoga, we do a lot of alternate nostril breathing, and that'll activate the different um, energy um, systems there. Right, right. You get the I don't put in Bengala, and you you uh, you have the uh, the the yin and the yang of the uh, of, uh, of of the energy system. You have the you know the caduceus. We have the the the, the two energies moving up and then with the sushumna coming up the center. So that if you get that, whenever you get that left right hemispheric synchronization, then it opens up the sushumna nada, which is the, uh, the big energy channel up the center, which is where the kundalini spirit rises. But it's, uh, it correlates to the, the, the thrusting vessel in, in Chinese, medicine. So that, that, that same uh, idea there. So whenever you get that hemispheric synchronization going, then it awakens the, the energy going up the, it's called the thrusting vessel or the penetrating vessel. And it's a very powerful uh, part of your, uh, your energy system. When you get that going, then, uh, then you're cooking. You're cooking with gas. Okay, anybody else? Getting, getting closing time here. Um, all right, okay, thank you all so very much. I really appreciate your coming and, and joining in the dialogue. Please bring your questions in and, and uh, topics and I love it when you do because then gives them, you know, gives us something to, uh, to play with. And um, uh, see you next week. Great, love you. Yes, Sunday. Bye, bye all.